What's up, it's Cody, welcome back to the channel. Now today, I'm gonna to show you the absolute best way to go about doing your live streams. Whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, your live stream game is gonna significantly improve if you use this program that I'm about to show you. Now, I'm sure you've noticed lately that live streaming has become so, so popular, and I really think that it's only gonna continue getting more popular with time as more artists get used to it and it becomes more of a norm. So today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how to go about improving your live streams to get the highest possible quality for your audience. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this is mainly for a Computer. So if you're trying to do it on your phone, it's not gonna work as well with this program and this way of doing it. Um, I do have a video on how to do a great Instagram live stream to use your own audio, um, to get the audio from your mixer to your phone. So I'll drop a link to that down below if you wanna check that out. But this one is more specifically using your computer and for Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. Now, really quickly, just before we jump into it, if you could do me a huge, huge favor and just hit the like button down below. It really helps out me and my channel and gets this video seen by many, many more people. So if you could just take one second and go make that thumbs up blue down below. It'd be so greatly appreciated. And if you are new to the channel and want to stay up to date with music related videos like this one or how to get more streams and release a song properly, then be sure to hit the subscribe button down below so that you don't miss out on any of my weekly videos. All right, so let's jump into it. This is the program that I'm using and it's called OBS Studio. Now, OBS is a open broadcast software and it's totally free. So it doesn't cost you any money to use and all you got to do is click on the Windows or Mac version and it will start downloading for you just like that. So the program's free. It's so easy to use and it's gonna up your game so so much now really quickly If you do want to see what the final product from OBS can look like at the very end of this video I'll have a clip of a live performance that my band did not too long ago using OBS on a Facebook live stream Now I did have to download the video from Facebook because I didn't have it saved through OBS directly So the video is kind of compressed and it doesn't look too great But I promise you when you go to use OBS and someone watches it live on Facebook, it's gonna look great It's just what Facebook does with all their photos and videos as I'm sure you found out so don't worry worry about the quality when you're watching it. I promise you it looks so, so good when you're watching it live. All right, so this is OBS, and as you can see, it loads up with a blank screen, and it already looks pretty intuitive to use. You have your scenes, your sources, your audio mixer, your scene transitions, and then some simple controls. So all we're gonna have to do to get started is import um, our video capture machine and add a video capture. So we're gonna go to video capture device. Now, I normally use my Canon camera that I shoot on my DSLR, so I don't actually have a video capture device to show you, but if I did, I'll show you how I would set that up. I would go with my Canon, and then I would select the camera, which is this one, I use a webcam, and then OK. Now, normally it would pop up here and you can move it around and resize it, but as I said, I don't have the camera, You're, it's, it's being used right now, so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to show you exactly how that works. But that's how you set up your camera to see it. And then from there, you're gonna need to add your audio. Now, I have a Behringer X32 that I mix all of my audio through. So if you have your own little audio mixer or an audio interface that you wanna use to mix your sound with, you're gonna be able to use that no problem. And it's gonna be so, so easy to do. So all you're gonna have to do is add an input device. I'm gonna call this X32, because that's what I use. And XUSB is what it's called for me. So all your audio devices, if you have some built-in audio devices on your computer, will show up here. All right, now that we have our camera added and an audio source, basically the stream is gonna be good to go. But what's really great about OBS is it's kind of like Photoshop. You can add different layers and elements to it and add whatever you want to make it look good. So let's say I wanted to add my band's logo to it. I am just gonna go ahead and pull it up right here, Bellevue logo, and I can pull it right onto the screen and adjust it and move it wherever I want. So if I wanted it to be just down here a little bit, I'd be able to pop that up there, no problem. Now with a live stream, another thing that I think is really, really great to add to it is just your social media links. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up um, an Instagram little image here, resize it to something that would look good. And all you have to do is just drag and drop it right on the screen and it pops right up. So I'll put that there and then you can go ahead and add your handles. So you just go ahead, add, text, Super simple to do. This is gonna be my IG text. And then I go ahead and put in whatever I want. So we'll go at uh, official Bellevue. So that is the name of my band. And you can resize it down. Now, if you hold shift, you're gonna be able to adjust it however you want. If you let go of shift, it will keep it to the same dimensions. So just a, a, little, a little tip, something that might make it a little bit quicker and easier for you to use. You can drag and drop that wherever you wanna go and then you can use the arrows to finally adjust it and get exactly where you want. Now, if I was to do a live stream, I'm kind of already set up with something that looks pretty good. 
I mean, I have all the images there that I want. Now, let's say when you start your live stream, you don't want it to have you showing right away. What you can do is you can add another scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a pre-show scene right here. So now I have a fresh start, nothing on here, and I can build a separate scene so that when I start this stream, it's not just my face on here right away, I can have something else. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull in this colored background that I have, this really nice uh, Instagram colored background. And again, I'm just gonna pull on my Bellevue logo, and boom, we're good to go. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that whichever scene is on top is gonna be seen. So if the Bellevue logo was down below, it'd be hidden behind the the, the Instagram kind of coloring here. So we wanna make sure it's on top. Now, if at any point you do wanna get rid of one of your sources, you just click the little eye icon and it will mute it. It will hide it from your screen. So it makes it really, really easy if you wanna add or take away something. And it's, it's quite simple to do, honestly. Now, this is where it can get really fun with how you transition between scenes. Let's say you just need a slow transition. You can go to something like 300 milliseconds, which is equal to three seconds. And now when I go between my pre-show and the actual show, it has this nice, beautiful transition into what I want my show to look like. And it's, it's super simple, and I can go right back to it just by clicking on the pre-show. So it's really easy to cycle between um, the scenes that you have and, and really have a great-looking live show without a whole lot of work. I mean, I've only spent a couple minutes on this, and this is, this is already pretty much ready to go. Now, once you have your stream all set up and it's built and ready to go, you're probably wondering, well, how do I connect it to Facebook or YouTube or whatever it is? Well, it's really, really simple. If you go up to the OBS preferences, you will see under stream the, the stream key that you're looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this old one that I had. So all you're gonna have to do is select what service you're using. I'm gonna go ahead with Facebook Live. And now you're gonna need to find the stream key. Now, let me show you how to do that. So you're gonna need to pull up Facebook and whatever page you're gonna be doing your live stream from, I have this, uh, this fake kind of test account that I use for everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that I'm going live on this account. Now, the great thing is you can set this up in advance. I believe it will save it for five days. So if you know you have a stream coming up in a couple of days, you can get all of this set up before it's actually time for the performance, which is nice. It takes the headache out of worrying about it the day of. So all I have to do is make sure use stream key is selected and then copy this stream key right here. And then if I go back to OBS and paste it in here and click OK, it's gonna be all linked up. Now, you'll see right here that it's waiting, Facebook is waiting for my live video. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go to my pre-show and I'm gonna go start streaming. Now, keep in mind, this is only streaming on OBS. I haven't gone live on Facebook yet, but I'm telling OBS when I say start streaming to send this stream to Facebook. And as you can see, it's popped up right here. So if I make that full screen, that is exactly what I sent over or exactly what I wanted to be on OBS and it's sending over no problem to Facebook. Now, as I mentioned, Facebook does kind of compress and give you kind of crappy quality, which is unfortunate, um, but it, it will shift throughout the performance. So you'll see sometimes these numbers will pick up and you'll get a bit better of a frame rate between it all, but you can also go into OBS and change those settings on your own. So if you stop the stream and go back into your settings, you'll see that the video is only set up at 720, where it's coming in at 1080. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that out to 1080 as well, so that I'll get a bit better resolution on Facebook. Now, one other thing that we can do is if I go to output, I can up the video, bit rate and i'm going to try to bring this up to well let's see how high it goes oh wow it goes pretty high so this is how fast the video is going to transfer information to facebook so let's try 4.5 megs and see if that makes any difference in the quality of our stream so i'll start the stream again and come back to facebook wait for it to connect there we go okay so i selected 4.5 but it looks like it oh it just hit it there so as you can see, that already improved the quality so, so much, and all I had to do was change some settings in OBS. Now, keep in mind, if your internet is a little bit slower, or maybe you're on Wi-Fi and you don't have a, a hardwired connection, you might not get this consistently, and it might drop out a little bit. But that's okay, because of course, we do want as high quality as possible, but we wanna make sure that it stays consistent, so that it's not gonna be in and out and in and out. So I'm not streaming anything too heavy right now, but it looks like it's doing the trick and staying up pretty stable, so I'd say those are probably good settings for you to start with. If you do notice that it drops out a little bit, maybe drop that down a little bit. Uh, maybe bring it down from 4.5 to maybe just 4 or, or whatever seems to work best for you. So one last really cool thing that I do want to show you with OBS. Now, there are tons of things I could show you, but I'm not an expert on it. I'm just a musician who uses it and has learned it through playing around with it. So if you want to dive into some deeper stuff, I'm sure there's a ton of great YouTube videos out there, or just play around, click on all the little tabs and see what they do. But one great thing with OBS is that it can record your stream directly to 
your computer. So you don't have to go back to Facebook like I had to do and download it after. You can select where you want it saved, what format you want, um, what quality you want it to be. You could have it even higher than what you're streaming at. And then it'll be saved to your computer as soon as you're done this stream. So you don't have to worry about it uploading and going through somewhere else. You'll have that saved right onto your computer to, to do whatever you want with in the future. So I think that's one really, really great feature that OBS has built into it, in addition to many, many more. Well, anyways, I hope you found this video really, really helpful. I know that OBS has upped my own live stream game so, so much, and I'm sure that it will do the same for you. Now, really quickly, I just want to know, what have you been using for live streams in the past? Drop a comment down below and let me know. I'd be curious to see if there's any other programs out there that I should know about or should be using, so drop a comment and let me know. And once again, if you did find this video helpful, if you could please just do me a huge, huge favor and hit the thumbs up button down below and give this video a like. It really helps me out more than you even know, so thanks so much if you can do that, and if you don't want to miss out on any more of my great videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.